Hi friends and foodies. Welcome to the Daily Spread Quick Kitchen. Today our cuisine is going to be German with an Asian twist. I'm Chef Steph. Glad that you're here. Daily Spread is a catering, meal prep, school lunch program, and bakery business located in Cedar Park. We are just north of the state capital of Texas, which is Austin, and the state of Texas is home to the UT Longhorns, the A&M Aggies, the Dallas Cowboys, and the Houston Texans. We're so glad that you stopped in today. Take your shoes off, sit a spell, and let's fill your tummies. Welcome back, friends and foodies. Today, we're gonna to get started on our Bavarian pot roast. Um, it's a roast pork dish that is very near and dear to the German heart. And you start with a boneless pork roast or pork shoulder, pork butt. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna make a rub. It's a salt and pepper and a paprika. And we're gonna make a rub on it and then we're gonna pan sear it in some canola oil. Once we pan sear this, then we're gonna take it nice and low and slow. And we're going to saute some carrots and celery and some vegetable broth. We want a nice golden brown on this. We sear in the juices. If your pan is good and hot, it won't take too long. You must be very careful because the paprika will burn on you. So we're just gonna give it a couple of turns, let it kind of hang out there for a moment, and then we're gonna let it rest while we work on our other ingredients. As you can tell, our, our pork has got a really nice sear on the outside of it. So we're gonna lift it out, let it rest for a moment. Then we're gonna come over and we're gonna chop up our celery and carrots to add them. In a traditional, because we're, do, we're doing a Asian twist on this, a traditional roast pork would have had beer and tomato and leeks and all that. But because a lot of flavors don't, you cannot fuse flavors directly with each other. You, there are, there's some give and take on there. Um, not everything is gonna mix. So we're gonna omit the beer and we omitted the tomato sauce and the leeks because now we're gonna add, we're gonna make an Asian plum sauce that's gonna complement the flavors that we have in here. So we're just sticking with the nice vegetable uh, flavoring there. It's gonna take a few minutes. You want these to be a little tender in here because what we're gonna do after that is we're gonna add some vegetable stock. We're gonna put it in our pan and then it's going in the oven for about an hour and a half at 425. Technically, you should be low and slow, 350, 325 for an oven, but it's gonna take you very long. Because we have got these in smaller pieces, it's gonna cut the cooking time. And we're gonna take the temperature up so that we can have lunch a little sooner than normal. We now have our sauteed vegetables. We're gonna add some vegetable stock to it to give that pork something to cook in. We're gonna put everything in this handy dandy roasting pan. Add our pork. Now a lot of people do not believe in this or have an aversion to it. I happen to love it, but we're actually gonna add a saran wrap to the top so that we can lock in some of those juices and all that and our meat won't dry out. We're gonna put the lid on it and we're gonna put it in the oven at 425 and let it do its thing. All right, friends and foodies, while our pork is in the oven roasting, we're gonna work on our next longest item, which is we usually in Germany They'll have, they're well known for their uh, apple strudel. However, apple strudel can take quite a long time to bake, especially with that dough. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use phyllo dough as a substitution. And instead of apples, we're gonna use pears. We have Asian pears and a couple of uh, red pears. 
We're gonna add some cherries to it. And instead of pecans, we're gonna use pistachios. We're gonna use star anise, and then we're gonna use some vanilla in there. And we're gonna give this a little bit of an Asian twist on it. Need to get a little water in our pan. Because our pears are gonna need to roast in here and saute a little bit and soften up. Asian pears are traditionally a lot harder than your regular pears. So we're gonna need to soften those up. Growing up, my grandmother used to always make strudel and all kinds of things because being of Czech and German descent, we always cooked. We had homemade egg noodles and all kinds of things. We had cinnamon rolls, homemade soups, and all kinds of stuff. When I got married, my husband's mother had a pear tree in her yard and they weren't the regular eating pears, they were cooking pears and you could put out somebody's window with one of those pears, they were so hard. So you had to cook them down and can them and it was a whole different process, but they were really, really good. Don't see those pear trees too much anymore. Now you also, we're gonna, you add fresh bean cherries to give you a nice color while this is sauteing in here and simmering down. But today we're gonna use a little substitute because cherries are not in season where I'm at right now. Okay, we're gonna add a little. Typically I use star anise in here. I put about four or five little florets to add us an Asian flavor. We're gonna add some sugar. That's gonna help break down those pears. A little vanilla. And it's always good to have a really good grade of vanilla when you're cooking. Then we're gonna spice things up a little bit with a little pinch of ginger. We're not gonna add our cherries right away because if they were fresh cherries, you would add them pretty quick after the pears soften up. But because we're not using our fresh cherries, we're just gonna add them at the very end. We're gonna let this hang out for a little bit and get soft on us and we'll be right back. Okay, friends and foodies, our pears are all nice and all softened up and all marinated in the juice here. We're gonna add the cherries. Let that hang out for just a moment. Now, you're also, there's a lot of liquid in here. And so we're gonna wind up pulling everything out of here as soon as it's all married together. And we're gonna make a little slurry out of this to thicken this up. Because when you're making your strudel, you have to have something thick in that dough or else you're not gonna have any filling in there. It's all gonna run out with all the liquid. So, okay, these cherries are gonna give us this beautiful red color here. We're actually, with these cherries, there's a little bit of leftover cherry sauce in here that's almost got it to the thickness we want. So we've stepped aside and we've got us uh, something that'll work here to fish all this out because we wanna leave the liquid in the bowl so that we can add a slurry which will thicken our sauce and then we'll be ready to roll our strudel and then get it baking in the oven. Okay, we fished out all of our pears and all of our cherries and we've left behind what juice was left from cooking. Now we're gonna make ourselves a little slurry. I have some water here and we're gonna add just a bit of cornstarch to make a slurry, which is gonna thicken our sauce. We're going to add it. Now, here is our phyllo dough. We have us a tray that we're gonna roll this on. We have some butter. As you're doing this, the butter needs to go in between the layers. So we're gonna pull up, these are little fine pieces of dough and they're gonna dry out on you really, really quick. So we're gonna pick up a few pieces of dough, about three or four sheets. We're gonna add some butter. The trick with these sheets is to get them to all come out at one big happy sheet. Makes it a little bit difficult because once we get our filling in here, we're gonna roll it up 
and then we're going to bake it. So not having them come out as a solid sheet sometimes can make things pretty difficult. We're going to see if these are going to cooperate with us today. You're going to do this about three or four times because you want to get a nice solid dough around your fruit filling. I'm actually, because some of these layers not whole, we're going to dig down a little bit. Let's see if I can get one that's whole. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, you notice I didn't put any butter on the last layer. We're going to put some chopped pistachios. Give the layer that. We're going to layer in some coconut. And incidentally, with apples, you do the same thing with this. You get your apples, um, add your apple pie spice, put some raisins, some pecans, and some coconut. And you could just do this with just about any fruit. But we're using the pears today for our, our Asian fusion. We're gonna add our hot pear mixture. You don't wanna take it all the way to the edge because we're gonna fold up the sides a little bit to give us a nice folded edge look. Doesn't always work, so we're hoping this is gonna cooperate today. You just never know. Sometimes this stuff has a mind of its own. Okay, now the tricky part. We're gonna fold in the edge, fold in this edge, and we're gonna start rolling. Once we get it rolled, this is where having that one sheet really comes in handy. But it's just not going to happen today. So we're going to do the best that we can do with what we have. Okay, once you get it rolled, then we're going to put a nice slathering of butter. Butter always makes it better, and it's going to give us a nice brown crust on the outside of that. And then we're going to pop this in the oven for about 20 minutes. So while we're doing that, we'll be right back. Hey friends and foodies, now we're back. We are going to work on our potato dumplings, which is another staple of the German culture. Um, these potato dumplings, we've got some nice uh, regular potatoes. We've boiled them and mashed them. We're gonna put them into a nice bowl. We're gonna add salt and pepper. Our Asian twist, we're gonna add a little curry, a little turmeric, which is also gonna color these a nice yellow. We're gonna add a little garlic, two eggs, that egg would ever come out of there. And we're gonna add cornstarch. Typically we use potato starch or cornstarch. That's our thickening agent so that our potatoes are going to hold together. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna make little dumpling balls out of them. We also have a pot of water over here that's boiling because growing up we always had chicken and dumplings and our dumplings were like little clouds and you would use flour and eggs and you'd make them and then you'd drop them in the water and it'd be like little clouds you, because they'll sink to the bottom and then as they cook, they're gonna come up to the surface. You want this pretty stable and thick to hold its own as you're gonna dump them. We're gonna use, usually the German people will fold these by hand and form them by hand and then drop them into the water. Today, we're just gonna use a scoop and scoop them in. I'm finishing this mashing here to make sure we try to get them as smooth as possible. Now you know when we did these, we did not put them in a mixer. I do my mashed potatoes for dinner service in a mixer to get them nice and creamy and smooth, but this we do not want to do that because it will, your potato will not hold together like it will if you just hand mash it. We're gonna add a little bit more cornstarch so we can thicken this up just a little bit more. And then we'll be scooping away. All right, 
We're just going to drop these by scoopfuls into the water. And as you can see, they're going to they're going to go uh, sink to the bottom. It takes a good 10 minutes. Once they're finished, they will float. Every year I make Sometimes two, three times a year when the weather gets cold, I make chicken and dumplings for my family. And usually it's the dumplings that get fought over. So I should say I just make them dumplings and omit the chicken altogether. Cause I always wind up having to make extra dumplings the next day cause they've eaten them all. Okay, that ought to be plenty. Now we're just gonna hang out and wait for them to rise to the surface. And while we're waiting, we'll be right back. Okay, friends and foodies, we're back now, and our dumplings are actually floating in our water. So we're gonna pull these out, and they're ready to go. They are ready to be plated for dinner. As you can see, they're all just kinda floating in here, a bunch of ice cubes. Okay and we'll be right back. Hi friends and foodies. Now we're gonna make our uh, sweet and sour green beans. There is a German version of the sweet and sour green beans. The sweet and sour sauce is just a little different than the Asian version. So we're gonna make that swap today. We've got our water boiling and we're gonna cook some green beans in there. And then eventually we're also gonna add some cooked bacon that we have. And while those are cooking down, we're gonna work on our sweet and sour sauce. Pop it in. Let that just kinda hang out for a while. While that's hanging, we're gonna put a little ketchup. We're gonna add Pineapple sauce. Brown sugar. Little red rice vinegar. Soy. Like that up and come together. Then we're going to add a little toasted sesame oil at the very end. We're also going to throw in a little, little salt, a little pepper, and a little ginger. Let that cook down. It's going to reduce for us. Then we're going to add a little cornstarch as our thickening agent. And our sauce is complete. A little more soy the color. There we go. There we go. Let that cook down. All right, friends and foodies, we're back now. Our green beans have sauteed in here. They're soft. We're going to add the bacon to it. Give it a little bacon flavor. Let it just kind of hang out for a moment. Our sweet and sour sauce is reducing here. We're gonna make a little slurry and thicken that up with a little water and a little cornstarch. Because what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna make this just thick enough so that when we drain those green beans, it's gonna coat that really nice and we'll be ready to go. More slurry. Do this little by little till we get the consistency that we want. Just want a light coating. And whenever you're doing this and you often wonder, is your sauce thick enough when you're making sauces for stuff? There's always the spoon, the spoon test. Tilt that sideways and if it's a gentle roll on it, you don't want it to stick, but you don't want it to just be completely liquid either. So you can always do the spoon test to see if it's thick enough. It'll stick on your spoon. Everything's good to go here. 
we're just going to plate and mix these right here and they'll be good to go rather than draining the water off. Now we're going to add our sauce. Give it a little toss and voila! Our green beans are ready to go as we pull together everything else for our, for our, our German dinner. And we'll be right back. Okay, friends and foodies, we're back now. We're gonna make our Asian plum sauce. Typically, you get a really nice plum fruit spread and we've got it here in the bowl and we're just kinda gonna loosen it up a little bit. It's gonna go into the pot. To that, we're gonna add a little Chinese five spice. We're gonna add a little soy. We're gonna add a little ginger. And then we're gonna just mix away. As you heat that fruit spread up, just note it's not jam, it's not jelly, it's a fruit spread because we want to do this and we want to cook as clean as possible without a lot of extra ingredients. So as close as you can get to the real fruit, you can make this with real fruit, but it is time consuming. So we're just going to speed things up just a little bit. And then towards the end, we're going to add a little sesame oil and we'll be ready. While we're waiting on that, we are going to use sesame oil. We're going to toast our almonds ever so slightly for our appetizer. Just let that hang out for just a couple of minutes. You don't want to overdo them. You want just a light toast on there. Now this will seem a little thin in the pan, but as it cools down, it will thicken back up to the fruit spread that we started out with. So if you're gonna work with it, work early. Otherwise, you'll be heating it back up to thin it up for your use. We're gonna use that spread, or that um, Asian plum sauce, on our appetizer, on our pork, and I've been told you can dump the dumplings in there as well and it makes a good flavor together, good match. Okay, friends and foodies, our Asian plum sauce is done. We're gonna add a little bit of sesame oil to it to finish it off. Give it a nice flavor. Our almonds are finished toasting. So now we're gonna put all of this together. We have our Asian pear strudel here. We have our pork that we did get out of the oven, as you can see here. Here are our dumplings and our green beans. So everything is here and ready. Let's start with our appetizer and then we'll move on to the main course. We're gonna use, these are Belgian endive. What's really, really cool about these is that once you peel them off, they make the neatest little vessels for appetizers. So what we're going to do is we're gonna put a little slather of our Asian pear sauce. We're gonna add some Gouda, chopped Gouda cheese. You can also use a fresh Havarti that's awesome. We've actually used a cheddar goat cheese and it was also fabulous. But what you want is something that's got a little punch to it. We have some crumbled goat cheese. We're gonna add that to it. We're gonna add our mandarin oranges. The downside to these little guys is they just don't stay right up. They will roll in a heartbeat. And then we're gonna finish it with a few of our little almonds that were roasted in some sesame oil to give it a little bit of a flavor. And then we are done. That's our appetizer. Next, we're gonna move on to our pork. 
Our pork has been sitting for a while, as you can see here. We're gonna move some of this out of the way so that we can get this plate just a little bit closer to us. We're gonna slice off a few steaks here, if you will. See, they're done. And now we're ready to plate. Start with our base. We're gonna add some pork. We're gonna add all the dumplings. And all the green beans. And then we're gonna finish with some almonds and green beans. Our main dish. Finally, the best part is our strudel. Our strudel has come out of the oven. It's been cooling. I'm gonna move it just a bit. Should just come right up. And then if you want just a little touch of excitement on there, you have your choice. You can either do a toasting of powdered sugar or we're gonna add a dollop of vanilla ice cream. And there you have it. Friends and foodies, this has come to the end of our segment for this time. We're so glad that you joined us for our German meal with an Asian twist. We do hope that you will come and join us again next time. As we head into the fall, we'll work on more for the holidays, for turkey, we'll work on tailgating foods and items such as that, so that you're all prepared for everything that comes with the cooler weather. You can find us at www.daily-spread.com in Austin, Texas. Thanks so much. See you again soon.